when my father died suddenly six years ago, it was devastating. It was one of those pivotal sort of before and after moments of your life. And it felt like everything had sort of caved in. If you've ever lost someone who you love, you understand. It's a, it's a complete alteration. And people around me who loved me saw my despair. They saw my total devastation. And because they loved me, they wanted to try and help me. They wanted to alleviate some of that pain. And so in an effort to do that, they did what good people do when they see someone who they love going through trauma. They said things. And often the things that they said, even though they were born of a really pure desire and a really beautiful impulse to help me, um, those words actually really hurt. And I want to talk about that today. What are some things that you should not say when someone you love is grieving. And stick around at the end because I'll share a few thoughts on maybe what you should say. But here are five things that you should really probably not say to a grieving person. Number one, they're in a better place. Now, this is a nice idea, the idea of a loved one being somewhere else, enjoying the afterlife, and so it's a, maybe a comforting image to try and offer to someone. The problem is, is that this place, the place where the grieving person now is, without the person they love, this place is far worse. So they're here with this vacancy, with this emptiness, with this deep sense of loss. And so, at least initially, it's not really comforting to think about their loved one somewhere else living it up while they're in such deep pain. It's not really helpful to picture some better place when the place where they now have to live the rest of their lives is much worse. I love my dad and I want good things for him, but it was really hard to imagine that he could be somewhere without his wife and his children and his grandchildren enjoying that experience while we were here grieving his loss. So do your best not to talk about a better place when the place where these people are is really painful. Number two, God needed another angel. You hear religious people say that a lot and it's a really quick, lazy response that tries to solve a really uh, unsolvable problem with a few words that really complicate things. Whether the person that you're speaking to who's grieving is religious or not, what this does is it adds a layer of complication because now God is culpable for their loss. You're putting the blame for the incredible grieving that they're going through on God. And so not only do they have to deal with the really difficult problem of their pain, but now the complication of a God who may have caused it adds a really existential problem that I don't think we want. See, it's a really bad idea to give spontaneous sermons when someone is going through grieving. And so resist the temptation to over-spiritualize with a lazy phrase that is really um, fraught with problems. Number three, everything happens for a reason. Now we hear this all the time, and although it's seemingly a benign statement that there is some beauty or, or answer behind all this, but what that phrase does to a grieving person is that it puts the responsibility on their shoulders. So they not only have to deal with the incredible, debilitating, painful what of the loss, the loss itself, but now they have to try and figure out the why of the loss. To tell them that there's a reason behind this puts the onus on them to discover what that reason is. And it's just too much to ask someone who is already dealing with all sorts of decisions and questions and problems to now figure out why this all happened. So resist that statement, if at all possible. Number four, I know how you feel. No, you don't. You may have an idea about how they're feeling. You may understand a fraction of what they're experiencing because you've experienced loss yourself. So you understand loss, you understand mourning in a very unique way. But the truth is you don't understand the loss that they're going through because grief is a profoundly um, specific endeavor. You are a once in history, never to be repeated creation. And the person that you lost is a once in history, never to be repeated creation. But the 
the person grieving is grieving a relationship that has never existed before and never will again. So they're not grieving the way that you did. I, I lost my father. I was not grieving him the way my brother was or my other brother was or my sister or my mom or his best friend. We were all experiencing that loss completely differently because we all had a different relationship with him and different stories and different history and different dynamics and different private jokes. So we don't even know how other people in our family are grieving. So yes, you understand loss and you understand what it's like to lose and some of that attrition, but you don't understand the grieving that they're doing. I could only be me losing my father, no one else could. And so try really hard not to assume that you understand how the person feels. Number five, call me if you need anything. We usually end an initial conversation with a person who's lost someone with that offer. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful idea, the idea that I'm there for you. And so that's a really you know wonderful expression of solidarity and relationship. But the problem is the person who has just lost someone they love, they don't know what they need. Right, They're in a swirling storm of all sorts of decisions that they've never had to make and questions that they never had to answer and emotions that they've never had to process. So they don't know what they need. And even if they did, it's going to be really hard for them to pick up the phone and to call you and ask for something. So better than saying, hey, um, call me if you need anything would be just to call them or just to think, well, what might be helpful? And then just go and do that without even being asked. So there are five things that you probably shouldn't say to a grieving person, right? They're in a better place or God needed another angel or everything happens for a reason or I know how you feel or call me if you need anything. So what should you say to someone who's grieving? Very, very little. In the middle of grieving, People are not going to remember most of what you said to them unless what you said to them is so damaging and offensive that it sticks with them. The only helpful things that I've found to say to people are, one, I love you. And two, I'm really sorry that you're having to walk this road. When my father died, I knew that there were no words that were going to magically rewind to the place where he still was here, where I felt the peace that I had before he died. And I knew there were no words that were going to magically fast forward to some place in the future where I'd processed this loss or where I'd made sense of it or where I'd created some new normal rhythm for my life. I just knew that I was in the present and the present was horrible. And that's the space where you are with the people who are grieving. You're in that painful, disorienting present and you get to sit with them in that pain and it's an incredible gift and that's really all you have to offer is your silent reassuring loving presence and really that's the only thing they're going to remember sooner or later you're going to encounter someone who is grieving deeply and you're going to want because you love them you're going to want to to help and you're going to want to fix it with words and i just want to ask you to resist that temptation to rush in and try to speak your way uh, or speak them into getting over this because it's not get overable it's not possible be quick to embrace be fervent in your presence but then be really slow to speak peace today i'd love for you to share in the comments below words that may have been spoken to you when you were grieving that were really not helpful, or maybe some that actually did some good, or share some strategies that you have for helping people through their grieving process. But thanks again for being here and for the conversation. So appreciate you.